Well, let's continue our journey through crystallography. Today's topic is going to be about how to describe crystal faces. And the next lecture is as well. And the textbook calls this face intercepts. Face intercepts. It's not a very long portion of the textbook. It's pages 131 to 134. And here's our hypothetical situation. Let's say we have a crystal and we need to communicate with someone else about the face that we care about. Now, not all the faces matter. One specific face matters for some geologic reason or gemological reason, right? Maybe it's the blue face, maybe it's the red face, right? Maybe it's up here, it's this black face. Well, how do you convey the specific face to someone else? Each face actually looks the same, right? If we haven't shaded them in. Well, the way we do that crystallographically is we have a system to describe faces. Let me give you a, maybe a more tangible example because there's not very many pictures in today's mini lecture. Let's say we are faceting a diamond. This We are the miner or owner of a diamond who's pulled it out of the ground and what we want to have happen is we need the diamond to be cut and faceted in such a way that these green domains occur in the finished gem because a green diamond is worth a million dollars a carat and a white diamond is like four thousand dollars a carat there's a huge amount of money on the line this same kind of situation actually has occurred many times throughout history this guy's name oh and by, by the way both of these images are from uh, GIA Gemological Institute of America this guy's name is Joseph Asher and Joseph Asher is one of it was a diamond cleaver who got to work on the largest diamond of all time and so these are two pictures of him cleaving Right, breaking apart a diamond called the Cullinan diamond. And we'll probably talk about the Cullinan more this semester. But the Cullinan diamond was about the size of a softball. Largest diamond ever found. And it now occurs in the crown jewels of England. So to this person, Joseph Asher, had to talk with a whole crew of other people about how to break the diamond in different directions in order to maximize yield of gemstones in the larger crystal. All right, face intercepts were probably how they communicated. So we're gonna go down here, we'll come, oh, close that. Roman numeral one is face intercepts. All right, I know we're repeating that, but just for our organizational purposes. And the definition for face intercepts that I'm gonna write for you here as well, is called, these are used to define a crystal face, used to define a crystal face using the axes it, rep it intersects using the axes it intercepts so we're going to be needing to use our mind's eye again and use those axes from crystal systems and see how they penetrate through and intersect with different crystal faces now the steps to do this task are four and so we're gonna go here we're gonna go steps and then we'll go little number one the first thing we need to do is identify the crystal system right this is the step where you're visualizing the crystal axes what are the different crystal systems pregnant pause as your mind recollects oh yeah there's triclinic and monoclinic and orthorhombic and tetragonal and hexagonal two divisions hexagonal rhombohedral and then isometric right those are our different systems the next thing you need to do is after you've identified the crystal system you orient and align the axes relative to the faces so we orient and align now again, this is just happening in your mind as the crystal is in your hand and you're looking at it maybe on a screen, you're trying to visualize these axes. So we orient and align axes relative to faces. Now you betcha we're gonna do examples of this in just a minute, okay? That we ask ourselves a question. Let's put it upside down question mark. Do they intersect? Sometimes a crystal face will be parallel to an axis. And then so the answer to this is no, that doesn't intersect. And other times it'll be perpendicular. Other times it'll be at different angles. So we can have a situation where if this is our axis, let's say our C axis, we could have a crystal face that's like this. And it's perpendicular. And so the answer is yes. Other times you could have a crystal face that lines up like this. 
and it lines parallel to the c-axis, and so the answer would be no. All right? That's what we mean by that question. And then the fourth step is to identify the relative distance. Identify relative distance. This is probably the most squishy of each of the steps, and we'll do um, some practice with it. Our symbology for face intercepts here in this lecture, we're actually going to build on it next lecture. If I'm tipping my hand because you're reading ahead in the textbook, there's a systematic way called Miller indices. That symbology is a little different, but if we start with this more generic approach where our symbols are just um, kind of given in ratios, where our symbology is we describe it relative to the a-axis, ratio to the b-axis, ratio to the c-axis, that gives us a really good starting point. Maybe as an aside, we have no commas in this approach, and there are no parentheses in this per approach. That might change as we move forward in, in future lectures, but so that's why we're putting this in here right now. But anyways, this is our symbology. We, if, if um, we get an intersect, at let's say a distance of 1, we would put on the a-axis, we'd put 1a. If it intersects the b-axis at a, a distance of 1, we put 1b. But if it never intersects at all, let's say it's parallel to the c-axis, no intersect, we put the infinitive sign, infinity sign. Okay, so this means, this means never intersects, or it's parallel to it. Now what we'll do is we'll do an example right now. This is figure 6.27 in the textbook. And if you want to take a look at that, I greatly encourage it. But what we are going to have from figure 6.27 is a rectangular lattice. All right. Um, okay, I'm trying to do this neat and clean. All right, so let's just, I'm going to use the lines on my page to help me draw this neat. These are supposed to be straight lines. Shame on me for not making it. Wow, it's really hard to sometimes write on a tablet. Well, don't cry for me. Okay, almost got it. We'll just put one more line in. Now we're going to make this a rectangular, whoa, rectangular lattice. Da, 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 da. Okay, we have a unit cell that's rectangular in shape, like, and it's, and we're going to pick some random spot. We'll just pick this spot right here. This is our center, right, for our, for our frame of reference. And we're only doing this in two dimensions. The third dimension is the C axis. And so that we're going to say this, this is like a bird's eye view. And so the C axis view, the C axis is vertical. It's coming straight out of the page towards your face. Now, let's talk about, so then we also, we can say this. This is the A direction and this is the B direction. We're gonna use multiple colors here. We're gonna describe different faces. So let's first, let's say there's a crystal face that comes across here. What is our symbology for, okay, so little one is here. So our symbology for little one, we intersect A at a step of one, right? So it's one A. What about B? It's parallel to B. So infinity b and c. Well, it comes straight out of the pages like this, so it's infinity c. All right, let's do another straightforward example. Let's put a face in right here. That's our crystal face, hypothetically. Number two, it is parallel to a, so that is an infinity a. It is a 1b, because we intersect b after one block, and it is an infinity c. Uh-huh. Let's change colors here. Green. Ooh, I like this one. Let's put it in right here. This is three. You can pause the video if you want to try to work ahead. Well, notice here we do we step one and we step two in A. So this is actually going to be a 2A. Never touches B, infinity B. Never touches C, so infinity C. And then our last example, purple looks pretty. We will draw this sucker in, this is going to be number four. Four is going to come across like so. 
I got a little messy there. You see what I'm trying to do, I hope. We're trying to touch both B and A. And so this face could be described as a 1A, 1B, right? That's our intersect length, and it's parallel to C. Take a look at the textbook if you want a little more um, discussion of that. And we're almost done now with this lecture. We're just going to just do two more examples before we wrap it up. So in our next example, close that. here's our next example. We are going to draw three cubes across the page. So just take your time with me. And let's draw three really nice cubes. And each one of these is going to be one little example where we describe one of the faces of the cube using our new face intercept format. Okay, one more. We're also going to make these cubes a little more three-dimensional by showing the back side. What I mean by that is we're going to dash in the, the back side faces. Okay. Okay. So there's what we have. And with each one, with each one, we're going to say that here's our center frame of reference. There's our C axis. Uh, here is our A axis. And here is our B axis. Let's add that into each one. C, A, B, C, A, B. Okay, so that took a minute or two. And what we're going to do is we're going to identify, well, I got purple, so we're going to give the nomenclature for these different faces. All right, so here's just the top face. This would be A parallel to A. So infinity A ratio symbol oh, parallel to B, never intersects B, never touches B. So infinity B, and it touches C at one length, so 1C. That was easy. We need to do a harder one. Here's a harder one. Let's go diagonal across the crystal in the inside. All right, that's what we're trying to show here. This one intersects A at 1, intersects B at 1, and it is parallel to C the whole time, and so it is infinity C. And then our last example, we're going to draw a triangle now. And we're going to draw a triangle that connects these three points, like so. Right, it's kind of this in this triangle that's leaning across the inside of your cube. Right, kind of like that. And what this one is doing is it intersects A at one, B at one, and C at one. So this would be a one A, one B, one C. Last example. Here we go. Let's draw an axis. This is gonna be a tall axis. This is our C axis. There's our center reference frame. So here we go. That's C. And out comes A. And over here goes B. And we have our unit cells in here. So we have like 1C, 2C, 3C, 4C. 1, 2, 3, 4. And we can do the same with our A's. We can have 1A, 2A, 3A. And we have 1B, 2B, 3B. And now we have a shape that sits, goes from here to here to here. Let's draw that in. All right, again, it's one of these like tipping triangles. These are, this could be a face on a crystal. Let's shade it in. What would be our symbology here? Well, it intersects, it. well, you got it. 1A, 1, 2, 2B, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 4. C. Well, thanks for following along with me on this. We're going to pick it up next time with the, a more formalized version called Miller Indices, a way to describe face intercepts. See you then.